Hi, chemistry students. Thus far, we've been looking at in chemical kinetics, the idea of a rate law and how to obtain that thing, this rate law, from an experimental set of, uh, uh, of data. And what the rate law ends up telling us is this. It tells us how fast we can go, okay, due to some concentration of reactants. So that's really what it's doing. It's talking about how fast due to concentration, molarity. All right, well, what if we wanted to ask other questions? Questions like, you know, what if we asked, what is the concentration after some amount of time? Well, unfortunately, the rate law itself does not give us the ability to do that because it's talking about how fast, not time. And there's a difference. So that's where we need to look at the rate law a little bit more uh, from its mathematical standpoint. So we know that rate is equal to, and if this is some reactant we're talking about, we would say it's minus the change in the concentration of that reactant. We'll call it A. And it's equal to K times the power of that reactant raised to some power X. And if there were other reactants, they would be in the rate law as well. So for every, react, every reactant we put in here, and we have our generic rate law. If you look carefully, though, you should see we have a time component, we have a concentration component, and another concentration component. And there might be a way to change what we have here into something more useful. And the, there is a, there's a mathematical technique which allows us to do so. So we can take... Uh, we can take this particular set of uh, equations like this and we can apply the mathematical technique called integration. It comes from calculus and all it really does is it will take um, our particular guy right here and allow us to turning it into a new equation. But it, we can't do one just in a generic form like we did above. We actually have to be specific. So we're going to play a few games of, what's, of what if. <clears throat> so we could ask the question, what if a reaction were zero order? And not just any reaction, we're going to talk about a very specific kind. We're going to talk about unimolecular. It's a big word, but it's pretty straightforward in what it's telling us. Unimolecular, meaning only one reactant. So we could have a reaction like this. A goes to products, or 2A goes to products, something like that. Um, and what I'm going to recommend is that you look at this from the point of view that you can convert anything into A goes to products. Um, because for this one right here, which, with it, which has 2A, we could just make this A goes to one half of a product, and that's just fine and dandy in terms of balancing chemical reactions. So we're going to deal with unimolecular reactions, and we're going to ask questions like, what if that unimolecular reaction were zero order? And if you do that, if you ask that question, then our rate becomes minus the change in the concentration of our A divided by the, con the change in time, um, K times A to the what power? Zero. So it becomes equal to K. And so what this tells us is that the rate itself is constant, okay, because it's, equal to, it's just equal to the rate constant. And then if we apply that mathematics to it, this, this thing called integration, we find that the concentration of A minus the concentration of my initial amount is equal to minus k times t. So <clears throat> we need to just know what these things mean. This is the concentration at any time. This is my initial concentration. That's still the rate constant. And of course this is time. So the, the beauty of all this is we now have an equation which equates the concentrations to the time.
Fantastic. Seems like a, seems like a no brainer and easy thing to do. The best news you're going to hear all day is that this equation right here for zero order is given to you on the exams. We don't expect you to derive it. We did not show you how to do this. This is that integration stuff. So we're not asking you to do that. What we'd like you to be able to do is use this integrated rate law and your book will usually go and, 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 and cover the first zero first and second order possibilities. I add the third order to it. So what we would always do then is we would see a bunch of a, a table of equations that looks like this. We're going to see integrated rate laws. And it'll be for reaction like this. A goes to products. Doesn't matter what it is, what the products are. And uh, it doesn't matter what the substance is. Okay, it's just one thing breaking apart or combining to form new products. The key thing is that we can, we can say for zero order, we know the answer. It is the concentration of A minus the initial concentration is equal to minus KT. We could do this for first order. When we do first order, we find that the natural log of A minus the natural log of A naught is equal to minus KT. For second order, we find 1 over A minus 1 over A naught is equal to positive KT. And finally, for third order, we find 1 over a squared minus 1 over a naught squared is equal to 2kt. All right, so here's the beauty once again. These are always given to you. You don't have to memorize them. It'd be nice if you knew that zero order was this reaction and at first was this or not reaction, but if you knew how these connected to each other in terms of their names, but uh, in terms of their orders, but they will be given to you on the test. So these are these integrated rate laws are now a tool for us to answer questions. And uh, there'll be a, a series of videos to show you how we use these and to talk more about them. One last thing before I sign off on this video is what do we do about this, this guy right here with the natural log in it, the first order, the beautiful and nice little thing we can do here is we can clear it up. We can use log algebra and remember that if we subtract two logs it's the same thing as dividing them and it simplifies this a little bit to minus kt and we get a whole new separate relationship for first order. So just something we can do that simplifies our life. Uh, we'll use both of these as time goes on. There you have it. Uh, a start to integrated rate laws.